Alright everyone, you may have noticed that over time I'm talking more and more about alt tech and, and really internet and technological news in general. Uh, that's become more interesting to me. As time progresses in the last few years, it's not just about politics anymore. Technology is so intertwined with politics and current events now that it's unavoidable. If you're politically interested, you're going to end up talking about technology. At least within the realm of censorship versus anti-censorship, alt tech tends to be the latter. Now, for anyone that doesn't realize, alt tech is not a sort of homogenous. That is that there are multiple sort of subsets of, of style within alt tech. You've got sort of the crypto and, and encrypt everything sort of stuff, peer to peer and, and innovating in a technological sense, trying to make things more efficient, less easily censored, less easily deplatformed or whatever, and blockchain and so forth. You've got sort of the open source crowd, you know, Ottman certainly with Minds, which is what I'm discussing here. And then you have just dedicated sort of you know, pro-liberty technological outlets, so like actual websites, like a Gab. Gab isn't isn't horrifically different from Twitter. If you, you know how to use Twitter, you'll know how to use Gab, in other words. They've just dedicated themselves towards being proponents of free speech, whereas, you know, if you look at old tech, not so much. Now, I think in the few years, you'll see that big tech will start to give up the shtick of, of censorship. I think, honestly, they're actually going to get together at some point and say, well, if we continue to abuse our users like this, we're going to destroy our own businesses. Probably not the best fiscal idea. At some point, the benefits are outweighed by the risks of continuing to listen to the corporate media. Hopefully it happens sooner rather than later, but I think it's likely to happen, at least with some firms. Like, I don't think Facebook can successfully rebrand itself as some sort of uh, great glowing minarchist site or something. But Twitter, yeah, they could try. YouTube could definitely try. It's possible. Nothing's impossible within the realm of technological and branding innovation. Uh, but Minds has now adopted a token. That is, they have their sort of interior uh, crypto assigned system uh, that's tied to the Ethereum blockchain. Now, what's a blockchain? I, I don't know. I couldn't really explain it to tell the truth. And you got to realize, when I first arrived on the internet, all this stuff didn't exist, and most of the sites that I used didn't exist. You know, there was no Twitter when I first began making YouTube videos back in 2007. Uh, so, yeah, it's like I'm a little bit at a loss. Thankfully, though, Minds made it simple enough. Like, a, a subscriber actually had to send me the link because the email that they sent, I think, you know, it got Googled or something. You know, it got zucked Google-style in my email, like, spam folder or something. So I never actually got the email as far as I know. Or, or it came long ago enough that I forgot about it, unfortunately, and I'm just, you know, I don't know, I'm getting older now, I'm getting dementia and shit, who knows? I'm just fucking forget my own name one of these days. You know, uh, you know, you, you drink too many Red Bulls, probably it would give you Alzheimer's. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a problem. No, uh, but they made it fairly si uh, simple. You just basically put in a phone number and opt in. Uh, and then, you know, you begin, it automatically will turn the points that you had into tokens. Now, I had a shit ton of points, and I was worried because when, I, when it they changed over, it said zero. Like, I couldn't boost the post. I'm like, oh. So the fact that I didn't set this up before means I lost every point that anyone donated to me. And by the way, they got, like, robbed of those points, too. Well, that's just wonderful. But as soon as you opt in, it, it appeared, and now I can boost posts again. I'm focusing, actually, on Daily Motion right now. Like, link in the description. If you want, if you really want to support me, get a Daily Motion channel and follow me there. <laughs> like, on a, on a site like Daily Motion, I kid you not, I looked. In order to be in, like, the top 250 users, you only have to have about 3,500 people following you there. I'm almost at 1,000 now, so it should be easy. And it's way easier to sign up for it, I believe, also as an app as opposed to Steam. And I like Steam it a lot, but Dailymotion is more of a recognizable site, really, for YouTube, <laughs> YouTube sort of audience. The YouTube diaspora that's beginning to look for other places to interact and make content... Uh, really, I think Daily Motion would be closer. Live Leak, oddly enough, still looks like 2008 version YouTube. It's just that they've made it impossible for you to use their site. Now, one thing about Minds, little advice for Ottman. Here's one thing I really want to see. I like to give advice because I, I think that some of that advice should be taken. Like, if people took my advice two years ago and started diversifying their platforms, then they wouldn't have gotten, like, fucked over as hard by, by like, Adpocalypse and stuff. Uh, here's one thing, though. Blog function. Uh, I wish that Minds had a blogging system that was semi-separate from the main page, because right now, if you click on blogs to make a blog post, right, it doesn't do anything unique. It's literally just like making a normal post. It just happens to be in a blog-style kind of looking format. 
it looks like something you get on like a basic WordPress site or something. Now that's that's fine. I mean, it's you know, informative, interesting, but it doesn't actually create a blog. What I wish is that users could set up an actual blog with its own link and everything that you could share out cross-platform because blogging, I like to keep my blogging semi-separate from the social side. The, the page itself is I share out videos and sometimes share my thoughts. It's not a place for blogging. I'd like a separate sort of component. And if there is one, then forgive me, but I can't find it on the site. Like I click on blogs, write a blog post, and it just comes out on my main feed. I suppose there's a second feed for blogs specifically, but that doesn't create a blog. It just creates a blog style post. There's, there's nothing to collate the post together like what I've got on Blogspot or WordPress or what you'd get on like a Tumblr page or something. Uh, I've, I've, I've actually had people unironically suggest that I get a Tumblr page. I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm going to hold off on that one. I don't think that I could deal with the uh, deal with the problem there considering what Tumblr represents politically. Uh, no, thank you. I, I think I'll stick, even if WordPress is delving into deplatforming people now, I'll take my chances and I'll hope that Mines gets a better blogging system going. But I think it's good to have, you know, like crypto and blockchain and all this innovation happening, peer-to-peer -peer innovation, which is what you've got with like BitChute. Uh, innovation is really what sets all tech apart. The old tech sites, because they don't compete, you're, the one problem of a trust is lack of competition slows down your progress allowing competitors potentially to leapfrog past you in some capacity. The advantage it gives you, of course, is because you get so many corporate buddies, you try to deplatform people before they can compete, which is what they've tried to do to Gab. Like, you know, some of these sites were probably, they had a hand in harassing Gab before. CNN certainly did. CNN loves its YouTube streaming and stuff. So that's sort of what happens. It's not a monopoly, it's a trust. None of these companies are technically monopolies. Well, kind of, but not fully. You know, it's technically, Amazon's the closest thing to a true monopoly. But they're a trust. They don't compete with one another, really. No, they work together for moral issues now, and they call that a great thing. The left in this country doesn't believe, doesn't understand that's literally corporate cronyism, but they support it anyway. So uh, congratulations to Mines on making the switch to a token system. I think it's a good system, it looks good. It also allows you to buy points with Ethereum. So, I mean, it makes sense. Although, one thing about pegging yourself to crypto is that cryptocurrencies go up and down in value. So, the, the amount of profitability might not be the same uh, time period to time period. Sometimes you might be operating at a loss if the cryptocurrency collapses. I, I think they should have used Litecoin myself, but I don't know how any of those things work. Maybe it's physically impossible. Who fucking knows? Now, I'm going to go mine some Dogecoins or something like that. would be funny. That's about all. Peace out.